All right, let's get the show on the road. This is, uh, uh, got my notes. Uh, this is one of the two bases I owned when I started my channel. It's a, a Music Man uh, Stingray 5 string, and I got it in uh, 2007. Um, the other bass I owned when I started the channel was that Maple uh, Rickenbacker. Um, back then, this was my, the bass I would use for all the uh, kind of wall era rush stuff. Because um, it had, you know, just it had a little more kind of mid-range, uh, sounded closer to, the, to a wall than the, the Rickenbacker did. And at that point I thought that um, this was as close to a wall as I would uh, ever get. Um, I don't think the five string Stingrays look as cool as the four strings. Uh, the four string basses, you know, the four strings had that the oval pick guard and the, uh, you know, the headstock, you know, the three on one, you know, the, the th th three pegs over one. Um, uh, what else? My, now, my, the first Music Man I had was a, uh, it was a Honey Burst Sterling. Um, I didn't really like the Stingrays too much. I found the necks just a little too, too chunky for me. Um, and I had this uh, nice Sterling, which I played for a number of years that I really liked. And uh, eventually, when was this? In the early 2000s, you know, I was doing a lot of five, you know, stuff that kind of required a five string. So. I got a five string and I was like, well, what do I need two basses for? So uh, I sold the Sterling and I regret uh, selling very few instruments, but that's that's one I miss. I, I think I'll probably wind up getting one of those at some point. Just had, it was had a really nice, uh, tight, focused sound and was, you know, really nice to play. Um, what else I want to say? Uh, Leo Fender, I give him a lot of credit for, you know, the, you know, inventing, uh, you know, electric bass, precision, the jazz bass, and then coming up with something, you know, just kind of equally as, you know, just a whole new design, whole new concept to the electric bass. And then moving on from here to G&L. Give that guy a lot of credit. Um, I don't know who... I'd ask you a question. Who was the first person you saw playing a Music Man? I can't remember if it was um, either Benjamin Orr from The Cars or Tom Hamilton from Aerosmith or uh, maybe uh, probably one of those two. I know I one of the early guys I saw playing a Music Man was John Glasscock from uh, uh, Jethro Tull. I think I saw it, it might have been on a TV. They used to run a TV commercial for um, song, song for the Wood, song, Songs from the Wood, and um, unless it's just a false memory. But, uh, you know, I remember the first time seeing one of those basses. I was like, holy, holy cow, look at that thing. Um, what do I think? The, the bass, it's a, uh, I think it's a great, what I call a utilitarian bass that really sounds good on everything you know you can kind of get away with playing any style of music you want on it um it doesn't have as strong a uh, voice as i like on uh some of my basses but um you know I, I still think it's a great bass very well made um i think it's always good to have a five string um and it's out of all my basses it's the only five string i have um, when I was looking at five strings, what I liked about this bass was the, uh, the string spacing is close to normal. It might be slightly narrower than a four string bass. I haven't really uh, measured it, but um, a lot of the other five strings I tried at the time was very narrow. And for me, who doesn't like narrow string spacing? But for me, uh, too narrow is as bad as too wide the string spacing. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, I also thought it had the best kind of tightest uh, sounding B string. 
I don't know how that sounds, but compared to, a, to some of the other bases I tried at the time, a Fender was one. Um, uh, did I write down some of that? Some of the other, they, their B strings were just, you know. And then it, and then it was just, bleh, it just, you know, no, uh, no definition at all. This I thought had a pretty good sounding B string. Um, what I like to do with this is I still put, I just buy four, uh, my favorite gauge, you know, four string set. And then I usually go for a heavier B string, like a 130 gauge B string. And uh, so light from the uh, G to the E and a heavier gauge uh, B string. Um, so yeah, I got this back in 2007 to replace a different Stingray. Uh, it's a long story about that. I went to a local music store and they had two. One was a black, black bass with a maple fretboard that I really liked because I'm a sucker for, you know, black and white basses. Um, Lynn doesn't like, like them at all. And, uh, and this bass. This bass actually played and sounded better. You know, it probably just had to do with the way it was set up. But even with that, I was still going to go for the black one just because I liked the way it looked. Um, but Lynn said, uh, she was like, oh, Troy, live a little, will you? Get the red one. She likes, you know, kind of bright things. So I got this. Um, it, I think it's one of the best built bases that I own. And back then they were priced really reasonably. I mean, I think my the first one I had was the first five string I had was under a thousand. This in two thousand seven was eleven hundred dollars. I'm not going to talk uh, dollars and you know money a lot in these videos, but um, in this case I will. Um, that being said, would I pay over two thousand dollars for one now? I don't, they're good bases, but I don't know. That's getting, you know, I know everything goes up, but that's quite a, that's quite a steep incline. Um, let's see. I guess the best uh, testimonial story, gee, I don't know how long this is going on, but I'll, whatever. It is what, it, these videos are going to be what they're going to be. Um, one of the best testimonial stories, let me get a sip of the coffee. <laughs> That's better. Um, uh, where am I? Uh, best uh, testimonial story I can, uh, you know, relate is a uh, what I call the Peter Moshe story. Peter Moshe is the house engineer for Daryl Hall from Hall and Oates uh, for his recording studio. Daryl Hall owns a recording studio in Pauling, New York, called uh, A Pauling Studios. Peter Moshe is the house engineer, and Peter, he did the sound for the television show, and he actually mixes a lot of the bands at the club. Um, you know, super great guy, great engineer, with a lot of credentials, you know. He's worked with some big people, and some very small people as well, because anyone can go there and record, and I did with a couple bands. And uh, I, I used to, like, um, we'd... With the tracks I did, oh, geez, my lights are flickering. Um, we would, uh, you know, get a drum track, and then I would go into the control room and do my bass tracks. And he, at, at one point, he wound up just futzing with my... Just playing with my tone knobs on the, uh, on the bass. And uh, he, I remember him, what, would, what did he say? Mm, da, da, da. Where's mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Lost my uh, lost track here. Um, he he used a term that I use now. He that the EQs had some very usable frequency centers. And also, what I like is you can play with the tones and not blow your signal up. So everything is set flat now. 
I'm gonna and everything right so it's boost and cut I'm gonna raise the treble you know almost all the way up now that's a little brittle kind of shrill sounding for me now here's the mid-range almost you know better part of the way up I'll turn it up and back it off a little and the low end I'll bring it all the way up and then back it up and then a cut may help raise the high end a little. Boy, I suck. But my point with that is, is you can basically run through the whole EQ and still maintain your your signal strength and not have to turn your gain down. I've had uh, some active bases with like um the OB, OB2, OB3, um, who is that, uh, Aguilar preamps, where if you touch anything, it just, you know, you're, you, you know, you're in the red. It, and I didn't really, this, so anyway, I think this has a really good uh, EQ system. Uh, the truss rod, the neck is really stable. I, you know, maybe the change of seasons, I adjust it. Um, you know, it's got the wheel down here and it's a super responsive you just give it a you know quarter you know ha half turn one way or the other and the neck goes right into right into place and stays there uh, any downsides to it um, the G string is really close to the edge of the neck but um, you know over I just keep it in mind and I'm sure there's a few videos I use the bass on where, where I, I go off the off the uh, off the edge. Um, uh, then so again, the high end can get a little brittle sounding, but that's you know that's that old kind of rage against the machine sound. It's all that you know super high end stuff. Um, I mentioned before it doesn't have as strong a voice as I like, but um, all in all, I, th I think it's a great bass. Uh, I kind of feel bad for Music Man because at one point they were kind of forced to compete with themselves when a lot of other bass makers started coming out with Music Man style pickups. I I can't think who some of the earlier ones were. Uh, maybe Carvin and Warwick and Ibanez. So all of a sudden everyone's putting Music Man style pickups in their basses along with, uh, you know, jazz bass pickups or precision pickups and and then you know music man was like well i guess we got to start adding pickups too although music man did have a the their um their music man savers were two pickup basses but uh i've seen basses with three music man pickups in it it looks uh, absurd i'm kind of a purist when it comes to that when i think music man i'm thinking of that you know one single pickup um well that's about it uh hope that's well if anyone any suggestions on stuff i could do different but they're all going to be along this uh, all, all of the videos are going to be this sort of format uh for better or worse but oh that's it and uh it's actually it's not red pa it's a transparent red uh so you can you know it's not any figured wood underneath but you can you can see the wood grain on it but nice base. Anyway, I think I'm going to do one other video today. And then, uh, like I said, in the comments section for this video, if you have any suggestions, um, please leave them there. All right, take care.